Let's move on to awards. Let's let's move move on to all right, sweet. So the six awards and honors we will do is MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, Offensive Rookie of the Year, Defensive Rookie of the Year, and Coach. All the same we did last year. So we'll kick off with MVP. I like Joe Burrow. I got Joe Burrow this year. I think um, they're not going to give it to Mahomes because they're always looking for like improvement rather than just consistency. Like they 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 like Mahomes, but I just think they're probably not going to give it to Mahomes. I didn't give it to him this year, and yeah, because his wide receivers were a bit ropey, but he's still got some good numbers. Um, they like Lamar because Lamar just wins games. Um, but I think Burrow has a big comeback year, and I think mm. they like him for that. Um, they might if they if they give him comeback player of the year, they probably won't give him MVP. Yeah. I don't know, but I think they're more likely to give him MVP, and they'll probably give Aaron Rodgers comeback player of the year or something stupid. Um, like forget that, that guy, <laughs> man. He's irrelevant. Um, so I like Joe Burrow. Chase is back and healthy. You got Joe Burrow. I like it. Yeah. Dami, what'd you like? You got uh, first of all. First of all, I don't believe that Joe Burrow is gonna get it because I don't believe he'll stay healthy. Okay. But if he is um, healthy. Mm, I don't know. That yeah, conference is hard, man. That conference is so hard. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but he almost won the Super Bowl. Like conference was good yeah. then. Uh, if an if was a fifth. Um, <laughs> what? um I don't even know what you're saying. Tell me your MVP. So, it's um, not Joe Burrow. So, now I'm going to see Jay Stroud. Mm, okay. I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> see Jay Stroud is so, like the fourth or fifth favorite on all. Yeah. But why? Yeah. You tell us why. Not um, because I think I think they're going to ball out this year. I think I think their division, although the Jacksonville Jaguars were were predicted to be the best team in that in that division for the next five years. I actually think CJ Stroud is probably better than Trevor Lawrence. And now he's got and now he's got another weapon in Stefan Diggs. Like I just don't see why the team would get worse. And if they and if they win the division with like thirteen wins, then they're gonna be close to being top of the AFC. And mm-hmm. the best quarterback on the on potentially the best team. I don't see why CJ Stroud can't win the uh, MVP award. And if he wasn't a rookie last year, he would have been in the competition. The yeah, competition. 100%. yeah. But lots of quarterbacks have good rookie years. And, and then you have the second year slump. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think he's going to have a massive down year because he's going to get found out. I think people are going to find a way to play him. Like, everyone's got the off-season now. They've all just got their schedules. Like, everyone's going to be looking at that guy. Okay, cool. I've got the Texans. Right, cool. Let's go and watch all the film on CJ Stroud. All the film. You, like who teams can actually prepare for him now whereas before you didn't really have the time to prepare for him you were looking at all the games now they can be like right I've got four months I can prepare for him set my quarterback yeah. up for success to beat him I yeah. think he falls off a little bit this year it doesn't mean he's not a good quarterback it doesn't mean he won't have a good career I just think this year will be a down year and he'll be a good quarterback but I don't think Stefan Diggs makes him as good as people think as well people know Stefan Diggs like I don't think he makes them that much better. I think he's a nice piece, but he's expensive. Mm. I don't, I don't love him with CJ Stroud. I think it's, I think it's you're stacked with options. Okay, great. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to ball out. It just means you have mm. nice options when you can't throw to them when you get found out. So, I disagree with you, but mm. I, I understand why you picked it because he had a really good rookie season. But I think he has a down year, and Trevor Lawrence um, has a good year. But I, I think the Texans probably still win the division. But I think it's really mm. close with Jack. But we'll get into that in a another episode. Okay. What do you like? Do you like yeah. Um <laughs> so I've gone a little bit outside the pocket for Aaron Rodgers. No. Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert, okay. You're oh thinking. Lord of Mercy. <laughs> All right, Again, fine. It is it's still it's kind of a comeback story because the last couple well, last year, last couple of years have been pretty tragic. He's got Jim Harbour. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's got a new new um a new um, head coach who I guess turns their quarterbacks into game managers. Um, so when in we, the in the nice way, yeah, like in, in a in good, in way, a, in not a, in like an offensive, a, not an yeah. offensive. You're yeah. a game manager, well, exactly. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. So uh, he um, look what he did for JJ McCarthy, and they got him drafted. Uh, yeah, but, but he, yeah. again, yeah. Yeah. what eleventh overall, crazy. Yeah, 
I can't believe that's the. I can't believe he did that. That's crazy. Well, I, I did that. No, no, I can't believe he did that. Oh. Jim Harbaugh talked him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Harbaugh got that guy yeah. drafted that high. Um, but again, he makes quarterbacks look good. He makes the players in his, in his team. And he knows how to market them as well. Yeah, fair enough. Marketing well, MVP is all about. It's, it's partly about marketing and mm. and I don't know, in well. I don't know yet. I just don't know who he's throwing to. Uh, <laughs> in the same way, I, I know. I know. I said. I know. I said um, about the weapons for, for Houston. It's kind of the opposite in um, in LA, but in the Chargers, but. Quinn you Johnson might, might, have, might actually, you might be able to make. You've got to have someone to throw. Quinn Johnson might be okay. a player. Okay, and who's Lamb the number McConkie two might, option? Lamb McConkie might be a player. I don't know. Lamb McConkie's your he, number he, two option? He, the tight ends, I don't know. Maybe. Oh. I don't know. Is yeah. Gerald Everett yeah. still there? Yeah. <laughs> this is real sad. This is real sad. I, I actually don't. If, if they can get another wide receiver in there and the defense can hold up, I don't actually disagree. But my concern is the defense can't hold up. So he's constantly having to chase games and just throws a lot of picks as a result, which I don't think is majorly his fault. I know he's a good quarterback, but I just got concerned about not having anyone to throw to and not having a defense to back it would concern me. But I like him with Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh was a great coach. I, but, I um, love that. Have a particularly th- I know we said when, when, when we're down, he's going to have to just mm-hmm. throw it, but that's not going to be the game plan. We're just a, what is it called? We're a smash mouth team. Yeah, but you've got to not concede that many points. And that was a big problem last year. Yeah. He had one of the most expensive defenses, and you were giving up an average of what, like yeah. 28 points a game or yeah, something? Done? Um, yeah, Josh Palmer, DJ Char, <laughs> <Who>? Brendan Rice. <laughs> I don't even know what position. He's a legacy, man. I don't he even know like, what position does he even play. He's a wide receiver. Are you sure? Yeah. He, oh, you're wow. just reading out names from the Keen Peel sketch, man. I'm not hearing like, hey. He's going to say Hinkle McCrinkleberry in a you, second. Oh, <laughs> Is Jerry Rice's son? Nah, man. Oh, yeah, fair. Fair. Yeah. Although I will say I don't actually necessarily hate the hate that pick. It just yeah. it, the defense concerns me and the lack of just no weapons concerns me as well. Like just one would be would be fine. Like just give me someone. Like but we'll see. If they get if because they could easily pick someone up. Like if they pick up a player or two and somehow make it work with the rookies, it, it, I think it's still tough. Alright, cool. Offensive player of the year. Um, none of this will shock you, but um, Jamar Chase. Back with Borrow, like, they kind of go hand in hand. If Borrow balls out, Chase balls out. If Chase balls out, Borrow balls out. Like, so I just see that going hand in hand. I know it, they're not necessarily going to give MVP an offensive player if you have to two players on the same team. Mm-hmm. I know that isn't that likely, but he's just that guy. Like, I don't trust the Viking situation with Jefferson. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't trust that at all. Um but Borrow and Chase is a known commodity that people cannot stop. Like, when they're both healthy, no one can really stop that. Like, maybe in the Super Bowl or, you know, maybe in the top, but that's not when the decisions are made in the regular mm-hmm. season. So I think um, I think if Borrow does well, Chase does well, and I think he could have a big year. Again, health can, health-wise, can that's going to be the thing, like you said, Dan. If both of them remain healthy, they're a problem for anyone, really. And they've got other weapons as well. It's not like it's just him, but he's that guy. I missed mm. them in the league, man. It was weird without him last year. It was. They were irrelevant, <laughs> yeah. But like he was playing through the injury at the start, and yeah. then he had to stop playing, and it just and Chase got injured as well. It was just, it was just a. They were a nothing team. They were such a big part of it. Who two was years before. Like no, it was um, um, what's his name, Browning. Oh, Jay downtown Jay Brown. Jay Brown. Yeah. Downtown, downtown Jay Brown. Yeah, like and, and he was in the he was in the box. Yeah, he was in Burrow's box. His girlfriend, and she was trying to get the airtime. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> she did get the airtime. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, Who do you like, Danny? So I think it's probably going to be Christian McCaffrey again. Um, I just don't. I just. I just don't see that Forty ers offense changing. Um, maybe Purdy throws it a bit more, but no one can stop Christian McCaffrey. That O line is so good. They've got. They've still got Kittle. They've still got uh, Debo. I think. And I'm not sure about Ayuk, but I still think Ayuk's there at the moment. Yeah. But they've just got so many potential weapons that you have to worry about outside of Christian McCaffrey that yeah. that Christian McCaffrey is just going to get too much space, too much time, too many, too oh. too many, too much usage that he's just going to ball out again. Probably get similar numbers to what he got this year. Yeah, and they yeah. probably will have to get rid of Ayuk. Yeah. 
they're probably going to have to get rid of Ayuk. I don't think they can make that work with the cap. I think they have to get rid of someone. I haven't looked at their cap situation. At what, at what point uh, in the season? Or when do they have to get rid of it? Get rid of it? Um, before the season starts. Yeah, before the season starts. There's a there's a point at when you have to because you can have like a larger squad and then you can cut mm. the squad down to 52 man. I think you can cut players up to that point, and okay. I think I think it's around then. I haven't looked, but it's before the season starts. Yeah, before preseason or around preseason. Right. So they've got a few months, but teams are going to want to pick up players now. Like you can't really wait on that. I don't know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Just boring. Yeah, I know, but it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, he's the favourite, of course. But All right. I've gone for no favourites, but I've gone for one of my favourites from last year. Mm. So I've gone for CD Lamb. Mm. Um, mm. I think Dak Prescott and CD Lamb are both in their final year of their contracts, so they're both going to be playing. Mm. Playing. For, I love that pick. Playing for that, uh, that next contract. What was he doing last year then if he wasn't I playing for a contract? <laughs> 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 So well, he's going to take take that um, that form from last year, bring into this year. Hopefully, they get um, more of a connection. And two years yeah. in a row like that would be nuts. Yeah. He was mm. balling for that yeah. section. That section of the season when we were doing fantasy game day, nuts. you and you kept nuts. putting him and I playing it every week with that. Oh. <laughs> and I just kept being like, no, he's not going to have another week like that. I'll put someone else. <laughs> and two weeks in a row, I got absolutely <laughs> winked by him. And then I put him in, and he got like twenty nine points. I'm like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I mean, contract year is a great point. I hadn't yeah. really mm. considered that. That's that's a really good your QB and your wide receiver one. Yeah, and that that's a really interesting one about Dak's contract because obviously season yeah. contract is a thing. As long as he can stay healthy, he'll get picked up. Mm. But Dak mm. might that might be in real trouble after this season. If they don't win big, they might get rid of it. I think all of the Cowboys QBs on their roster <laughs> are all up. Uh, the body of really? Yeah, Damn, that's <laughs> unfortunate. Yeah. They might just clean house and just mm. reset. They still got Trey Lance on there. Yeah, they've got Trey Lance, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No one's picking up that guy's fifth year option unless they pay him like a million or like five million or something. Like, he's going to get nothing. Mm. That's wild, isn't it? Like five, four or five million is, is, is like almost no money for a quarterback, but mm. bare money for almost any other position. Like for like a third choice in that position as well. Anyway, um, cool. Defensive player of the year. I like me some Miles Garrett. Um, mm. I was going to go TJ Watt again, but I got burned last year, and they clearly don't like him. <laughs> so it seems to not matter what stats that guy has. He could have forty sacks and then still find a way of giving it to someone else. So mm. I think this year I'm going to go going to go Miles Garrett. He's just a game wrecker every single time. Like tough division, but he's a problem all the times. So I like him. Okay, cool. he's unbelievable. Yeah. I'm going to go the opposite direction. I'm going to go TJ Watt. I Screw think. you, man. If it's TJ I'm, Watt this year, I'm done with this podcast. I'm out. <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore. I'm, I'm out like Chrisky, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I, think, I think he feels slighted after that 2023 season. There I mean, I, I mean, so in terms of stats, he had 19 so sacks, cool, one interception, 24 yards, and 68 tackles. Like, that pick was insane as well. He got a pick. Yeah. Like, pissed. Like, when you get a pick, you're pissed. Yeah. I mean, they'll probably give it to TJ Rodgers because they gave it to Miles Garrett last year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, he's, got, and he's coming back fresh from injury as well. So, like, yeah. so I, I see him coming back and just going on a rampage all for this year. As long as he can stay healthy because that is the problem with yeah. him. He can't stay healthy. I've got so. as well. <laughs> this is going to be the most jarring. Is it called the blood deal? Because they're like, yeah, yeah. We, we messed up there. We should have given yeah. it to him. If he, he has a, have a similar season, even if he might have a worse season than Garrett, and still get it. He's going to win it, isn't he? And it's yeah. going to be the most jarring. I reserve the right to change it. We haven't seen that got to the start yet. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. We'll, we'll read you all. Yeah, these are our early picks. Yeah, man. These are our early picks. I reserve the right to change it. All right. But I'm already pissed off. All right, let's go. <laughs> 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 All right, cool. Um, offensive rookie of the year, um, Caleb Williams for me it just feels really obvious. I know he's the favourite, but like, I don't really see a scenario where they don't have like a like a good season. They may not have a great season, but I I can't see looking at their schedule, looking at the players they have, looking at the wins they had last year, and the improvements they've made. 
that they don't get a 10-win season unless they get really significant injuries. Like, 10 wins feels quite reasonable for me. Like, they've got a fairly not, not too bad a schedule. They've got games, obviously, against the Vikings, which is very winnable. Like, the Vikings are not really the same, same team. They've got a rookie quarterback as well. But they've got they've got the net number one pick. Like, I don't know. The only thing could you could say is because they've had quite a lot of changeover, that there's no chemistry there. And that's the thing that really worries me is teams often do well when there's consistency, chemistry, all that stuff going on with like groups of players and that really won't be there. Mm. So if they can get a bit of that social capital going, a bit of that cohesive environment in the locker room in the next like three to six months, three, four months, then they'll do really well. But if that doesn't really gel and they don't really get any of that social side built up and they don't work well as a group, that could be the only thing that really, or obviously major injury, but that'd be what concerned me. But I think it's a 10 win team. I mean, it's a 10 win team. Weapons. His weapons, he's got DJ yeah. Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze, Cole Komet, Gerald Everett. Is, yeah. is, is, but they're all is. like, they're all like, <laughs> but they're all largely like brand new. Yeah. And he's, and the quarterback's brand new. Like the offensive line is pretty, is, is, is pretty Swift good. Yeah, they've got DeAndre Swift. Like these are all good pieces, but the gelling part is the thing for me. Like how does it actually gel as a group? And they really need to build up that like social side. But if the, um, if the defense can hold up as well, like the defense doesn't look bad as well. That can hold up. He's he's in with a really good shout. It just all looks quite solid, but mm. it's that mismatch of players or mesh mash of players kind of being thrown together. Like it's happened with like we've seen it with like um Galacticos and things like that, where they throw all these amazing players together and you yeah. wonder why they don't win immediately. Yeah. And you're like, Well, obviously you don't win together. Like you, they're not built they're not built to work together. They're not built mm. like they're individuals. So that would be the only thing. But I I, I think he's I think it's gotta be him, really. Yeah. Who'd you like, Dami? Yeah, no, nah, I completely agree with you, man. I have, like, they won seven games last year. With a mix I know, of, but... With a mix of Justin Fields and, and was it, is it Tyler Badgent or Tyson Badgent? Badgent. Like, Tyson Badgent. 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 Like, Caleb Williams is meant to be the next Mahomes, right? Can you, can you get them to three more wins? Like, take them to 10 wins, probably in the playoffs? Like, I don't yeah. see how he won't be the offensive player, offensive rookie of the year. But I think even if you look at it even a little bit further, for him to be offensive rookie of the year, what does he really need to do? Just be better than the other offensive quarterbacks, basically. Mm. You think it has to be a quarterback? It's, it's usually a quarterback, yeah. unless you've got like an insane like wide receiver like Puka Nakura or somebody who just absolutely cooks. Like, and he only did win it because of CJ Stroud. Exactly. So, yeah. like, what does he actually have to do to get it? Like, winning season. Because looking at the other, look at the other players he's up against as well. You're like, their team situations aren't great. Like, mm. who is it? You got Vikings. Who else? Patriots. Drake May. Drake May. Drake May in um, Washington. Like, um, these are players he's up yeah. against. Like, they, and they don't have the kind of at least base of a team mm. that you really liked. At least with yeah. the, at least with the. Um, well, the Bears, they had like a reasonable base where you're like, the team's okay, it's not great, but now you've added some star power to it and some talent. It's like nine wins, ten wins, like that feels quite achievable. Like, and that probably gets him offensive rookie of the year. I'm laughing because of my pick. Oh, tell <laughs> me. Tell me someone crazy. What have you done? Crazy. Someone, they told you wouldn't have bit. Give me the odds first. It wasn't in the top ten. How far back are we talking? Have you got a number to one, like a thousand to one? No, 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 I don't know here. Um, I bet it's going to be hilarious. Give me like a thousand to one. No, it's not a thousand to one. Hundred to one? No, maybe. I've gone for Keon Coleman. All right, okay. Yeah, that's just because you like him, man. You think he's funny. I bet he's funny. I don't know. Is he funny? I don't know. People say he's funny. I don't know. But the thing is... Josh Allen is yeah. just Josh Allen goes a bit super, Superman because he feels like he has to because he doesn't really trust it. He didn't doesn't really trust his weapons clearly. Um, but his weapons going into this year are Khalil Shakur or Shakir, mm-hmm. um, Kurt Samuel, mm-hmm. MVS, mm-hmm. Chase Claypool, and then obviously his tight ends. Um, and I'm just thinking, come a couple games of the season, Keon Coleman could be yeah. his number one receiver. Yeah, it's not great options. And if you're if you're the number one receiver in a team with a good quarterback who's got a big arm, 
if he breaks in like Puka Nakua and the quarterbacks don't have a great time, then, I mean, a lot of stuff would have to happen, but fair enough, man. That's got to be like 20 to 1 or something stupid. I can't remember. Was that the top 10? It was number 11. It's, oh, he's number 11? Yeah. That still feels high. 11? I think it's 11. That still Bids. feels high for me. Bids, yeah. can you say that receiver room again? Um, Gross. <laughs> it's Khalil Shakir, mm. Curtis Samuel, oh, mm. Curtis Samuel, uh, MBS, yeah, uh, Marquez Vardis, scolding or scolding or Sc- scanning, scanning, scanning. Uh, Chase Claypool. That oh, is the sorriest receiver room I've ever yeah, heard. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Do you want to hear what? some of the players ahead of it? Go on, Bro, Lab McConkey's ahead of yeah. it. <laughs> Lad McConkey is favoured ahead of Kim. He's 28 to 1. Yeah, that's way outside the top 10. Yep. Man, Drake so May is behind. Cute. Drake May is behind Roma Dunze and Malik Neighbours. Yeah, because he might not start. I mean he should. <laughs> he might not. Brock Bowers is up there, man. Brock Bowers is ahead of Lad McConkey and Keon Cole. Well, I think people are loving Titans these days, so break up Titan. Yeah, yeah. And one of the best pro- Titan prospects coming out of the draft. And who was the last one who was really good as well? Who was it? The Falcons. Oh, oh. Yeah. How's that going? Yeah, we had dodgy coaches. <laughs> yeah, and, and Keon Coleman's got a defensive coordinator. Don't worry about it. Oh, <laughs> my God. Bids, right, bids. I'm, 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 Biz, just to exp- just to add to that, the only reason why the B- Bills actually did well towards the end of the season is because they told Josh Allen to stop throwing it and they started running it more. Yeah. You realize that, right? That you realize that's why. Happened. You realize that's why Stefan Diggs left because he wasn't getting any more targets because they were like James Cook, run the ball twenty times a game. Yeah, don't worry about that. This this year okay. they got killed. Okay. And he's Debo, Debo kind of role. He's Debo. Big, big body wide receiver. <laughs> Might as well play him a cornerback. Fair enough, man. All right, cool. Let's move on. Feel like that all. <laughs> all right, defensive rookie of the year. This one won't fuck you. Um, I really like this guy, even when we did the early picks. Dallas Turner, man. He's just an absolute freak. Like, he's fast. He can jump. He's got range. Like, he's just an absolute monster. So, I. I, I don't see how he's not in with a reasonable shout. Mm. Like, he's just an absolute machine. Um, but yeah, man, Alabama guy has got, got moves. Okay. Damn. So I've gone for a bit of a rogue one. I've gone for, is it Cooper DeJean? Cooper DeJean. Uh, Interesting. Cooper DeJean, a uh, defensive back who's currently joined the Eagles. I think nice. the reason why I chose it is because the Eagles really struggled. On the def- uh, on the defensive side and especially in their secondary, and I was like, they pro- they needed to replace um, the players that left either through a- through free agency or just left because of their contracts. So I was like, mm. Cooper Dijon, he's probably going to start for them. He's probably going to start, probably get a lot of games. Yeah, as a first year rookie cornerback, he might get roasted, but he's the chances of him getting picks will probably be be quite high. So and if he gets yeah. a certain amount of picks. Like, a, like a, I think, was it Trayvon Diggs in his first year? Ended up, like, ha- with an insane amount of picks. So, I think... How, many, how many picks do you need to get, though, to get to win that award? I think over seven. I think because over seven picks is quite a lot. I'm pretty sure Sports Gardner was the last um, quarter to win it, and he got mm. two picks. I have no really? idea how he won that. He oh, because no one threw at him. He got two picks. Yeah. No one threw at him. As everyone was per- te- te- petrified. His um, his like de- his the passer rating on whenever anyone threw him was like forty. <laughs> no one could throw on him. His numbers were stupid. Yeah. But just on just on Cooper Jean, um, uh, he, he 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 like I don't know if he tweeted or he said he basically called out um, Caitlin Clark so they could beat her in a one on one. And it started, it started going viral. They both went to Iowa, so they're friends. Oh, but he, he, he's adamant. He, he doubled down as well. He went on, uh, on some sort of podcast, some news channel, and he doubled down. So yeah, that could be it. Have you but seen the way Kate? Have you seen the way Caitlin Clark shoots that three ball? Yeah, ain't yeah, no man, way. 
Ain't no way. Hey, he was Adam, he was Adam and Eve Dia. Yeah, no absolutely terrifying. Yeah. You just drop in absolute dimes. Yeah. And also, also they were saying they're going to use him as a pump returner as well. Good God, man. Oh, I mean, I've seen quick. it. I've seen it done. Yeah, I've seen it done. I've seen it done. Come back up fast. Like, they are quick. Fair enough, man. All right, cool. Last Mine? one. No, my, my Oh, one? sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, sorry. I'm I thought you said that. For, I was just heard Rogue uh, and I assumed it was you. I've gone for <laughs> Leia 2. All right. We like to laugh too. Yeah, so I, um, I initially had um, Jared Burst in. Um, it's gone to the Rams. And, yeah, I'm just replacing... Um, Aaron Donald's mm-hmm. impact is an opportunity for him. Um, mm-hmm. But I've got one for Larry Larry just because he's just a beast. Mm-hmm. And he ex rugby player, so I know he's just going to hit hard, tackle hard, get around people. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that, Adam. Yeah. That's probably it's hard to make that impact, though, I guess, from there, yeah. like, unless you're... Unless I'm making an impact. I, make I, 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 wanted impact. Pick, I wanted to pick an edge, but then I was like, again, that's just too... Yeah. Too safe and went a bit different. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm here for it. All right, cool. Coach, um, mine's a bit obvious, but um, I really liked him when when we were first chatting about him taking on the job. Um, it was Jim Harbour, and I didn't know how to spell his name, so I spelled it with six Gs. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Gs. So I don't know. I just uh, Harbour, just just bear. Um, but yeah, he he just see whenever wherever he goes, he seems to immediately make the team better. I, I don't. It seems to defy logic. I'm looking at that Chargers team and I'm not seeing how they'll be good, but I know they'll somehow be good. That's the thing. Smash my Gus Bus. Gus Bus. Gus Bus. I just, I don't think they'll be that really good, but they were so bad last year. It just needs to be most improved. He doesn't need to, if he gets them, if he gets them into the playoffs, Mm. he'll probably win Coach of the Year. And Justin Herbert will win. MVP. Yeah, nah, not about nah, I'm not about that. <laughs> but I don't. I just think if he if he gets them into the playoffs, that's immediately significantly better than their previous season. And no one thinks that they'll be that good, or no one thinks they they should be that good. Mm. Basically, they've got no weapons. Like Charles Nelson's got no one to throw to. Like I just, yeah, I just I don't. There's lots of other players, lots of other coaches that you could see. And coaches always a bit of a weird one. Like it's really hard to predict, but it just immediately makes it better wherever he goes. So. Yeah, I think he'll be a good pick. I think he's a great coach and it's a good signing. It was the right move for them, but it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But I like him for coach of the year. Yeah. I've got a moved away from um, from uh, Dan this year. Yeah. I've gone for the same, so I'll just jump in front of them. I've gone for the yeah, same. True. I think it's going to be a more... I mean, you have to believe. Yeah. At this point. It's, it's more... more um, <laughs> most improved. Yeah. Because it can't... I mean, it could get much worse, but I don't yeah. think it will get worse. I think the style of play is going to surprise... It won't surprise them in that. They, everyone knows what he's going to do. Mm. But I think it's going to surprise them in that how they won't be able to stop it as well yeah. efficiently as they think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, Andy Reid is 60 to 1, Dan. He's the, the least favourite to win coach of the year. Yeah, man. Just the guy... what, 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 yeah, what could you improve? Yeah. When, uh, it'd have, you'd have to have an undefeated season. Or and... Holmes gets injured, whoever their backup is. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, okay. Bring Trey Lance in. I'm sure he's got it in the back. <laughs> Jesus. All right, who you got, Coach of the Year, Dami, before we wrap it up? So, I can't pick between these two coaches. Um, D'Amico, Wait, Ryan's, no? D'Amico Ryan's or Matt LaFleur. Pick one. I think. Fine, I'll go Matt LaFleur. I thought it D'Amico as well, because he was back in CJ Stroud yeah, for MVP. Yeah. yeah, but I think if Matt LaFleur wins wins the division so that the NS- NFC North takes away from the Lions and gets 12 to 13 wins with a team full of second and third year players I think I think there's no doubt he'll be coach of the year I think to take so yeah that's my pick Fair enough second year is often the breakout year for wide receivers so I wouldn't yeah I wouldn't be surprised if that wide receiver call looks good yeah, but also, but but like you said with Jordan Love, technically this is actually his second year, so you you would almost want to see a regression with him. But if he doesn't regress, if he stays on par or even improves, and then you've uh, you've got all the you've got all these offensive weapons, I think, I think they're going to be even better. So yeah, if they get twelve thirteen win the division, I don't see why he wouldn't get coach of the year. 
uh, it's a little bit different. So I I agree with you that it that there there's potential for drop off for Jordan Love, but I think some of, I think a large amount of that gets mitigated because of his experience. Like yeah. he sat behind Aaron Rodgers and he's immediately come in and been really good, mm. which is why I keep saying it. Like I didn't even believe in Jordan Love, like at Jordan, all. Jordan Love didn't even believe in Jordan Love. Yeah, man, I know. What I said. <laughs> I know what I said. But like, it, it, if you have someone sit behind, like it just gives them so many opportunities to learn and build into the role. Like it's really hard to come in and be really good first year and then continue it into a second year. Really difficult. Like first year about CJ Stroud, if he has an amazing second year as well. Fair enough, like, but that doesn't happen very often. Like, if he comes in and sits behind someone for two years, you're just setting them up for success a lot more. So I don't think there'll be as much of a drop-off with Jordan Love as maybe with with um, um, with CJ Stroud. I think Jordan Love will have a better year than CJ Stroud. I think CJ Stroud will drop off and Jordan Love will probably be about the same as he finished the season. Like, pretty strong, like, pretty good. Um, you know, not well-beating, but, like, yeah. solid, like, B-plus quarterback. Um and they'll have weapons that are improving. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's unreasonable that the Packers come out with, like, 11 wins and the Bears come out with 10, 11 wins as well. Um, like, it's going to be a tough division. Like, the Lions have probably come out with also looking at 10, 11 wins. The Vikings, like, mm. hey, Vikings could be anything this year. Like, you don't mm. even know. I like Dallas Turner, but, like, outside of that, like, what is their team? I don't even know. I don't even understand their team at all. So, anyway, fair enough, man. Yeah. Actually, just a quick one on the Vikings. Um, they do have some good yeah. defensive talent. They've got Jefferson, Hawkinson, Allison. They've got some weapons. All the sins. What's going on? Yeah, but yeah. who's throwing them a ball? What a play. Sigh. Sigh. I just don't... Like, if he could be good. I just don't... I just think Harbaugh's done an incredible marketing job to sort his boy out. I just think he sold the dream. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, we predicted that he would get they they would move up for him. We thought they'd move up to fifth for him. Yeah. I thought that was insane at the time. He, I think he's a low end first rounder, like high end second rounder, and he went what eleventh? Eleventh. It's insane. Who do you think is better, him or Bo Nix? <clears throat> I think the difference between us is pretty small. I think. Um, where did Bonix go in the end? 12 I think he went twelve. Broncos. Yeah. Broncos. Yeah. But we don't expect him to start for the Broncos. I mean, we? why? Who have they got? Oh yeah, they got. Oh god, yeah, they brought Zach Wilson in, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Woof, yeah, that's gross. Um, yeah, he probably will start, but that's a rough situation to be in to start. First year in. <sighs> that, that Denver team is ropey. And that division is not nice. Like, division was ropey before, but that division just got a lot better. Like, I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, I, I think I think JJ McCarthy... I think they'll be very close. I think the two of them are very close. I think they'll both not have good years. I think both of them will have bad first years. They're coming into not great situations. Their divisions are pretty good. Like, there's, a, there's not really... Is there a bad team? I guess Vegas, maybe? Yeah, mm. Vegas and yeah. Chiefs. So you've got what Chiefs, Denver, Chargers, and Vegas. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that Chargers team will be tough to beat, I think, with Jim Harbour. That Chiefs team is obviously nuts good. Like, I think he's got a slightly easier division in Denver, so maybe Bo Nix, but I don't know. That's a tough, tough divisions all round. Just on, just on Denver's um, depth chart, Zach Wilson's third. Behind who? Jarrett Stidham. Yo, James <laughs> Stidham. Oh, that's tapped. Yeah, I mean, what's um, he done, though? Yeah, what have you done for me lately? Yeah. What have you done for me ever? Yeah, fair. Fair enough. All right, cool. Anything else to add? Nope. No. Nope. All right, sweet. Next week, we'll do some um, division stuff. We'll look over higher or lower, maybe. I know, Dammy, you're keen for that. So higher or lower yeah. wins, and we'll get into start looking to the season ahead. But if that's it, we'll, uh, we'll catch you in the next one.